I want to talk about some tension right now in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. You've expressed um, sympathy for, for want of a better term, Tea Party Republicans and their concerns about the astronomical national debt and the deficits. But when I heard you commenting on it, I remembered uh, former Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill saying in his book that you had told him Reagan proved the deficits don't matter. Um, can you square the two, the, the concerns about deficits now versus during the Bush-Cheney administration? Sure. Well, the, uh, at the time that um, is referred to in the O'Neill book was back at the beginning of the uh, Bush administration. At the time, frankly, we had surpluses. And uh, the issue was whether or not we could both uh, build up military force at the same time that we were concerned about deficit spending. And my point was that Ronald Reagan had done exactly that, that he had run a deficit in order to build up our military capability back in the early 80s. And uh, it proved a, a remarkable decision on his part. And to cut taxes both under and Reagan to cut and taxes at the same time. So the, uh, uh, I, I'm not opposed under certain circumstances to running deficits. The debt is another problem, and we've gotten to the point now where, especially because of entitlement programs, but because it really hasn't been much done by way of trying to restrain spending, we now have, you know, trillion dollar uh, deficits every year and a $17 trillion debt that we're passing on to our kids and grandkids. That concerns me. A lot of economists look at the debt and say a lot of the reason for the debt, in, in addition to the entitlement programs you're talking about, are things that you and President mm -hmm. Bush did. Um, in terms of funding or not funding the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, in terms of the Medicare prescription drug benefit, right. and in terms of the tax cuts. Mm -hmm. Are you you and President Bush not also responsible for the deficit the way they well, are? Well, in terms of prescription drug benefits for seniors, that's something uh, the president campaigned on before I ever got involved. I think it was a good program. But without taking an issue with the policies mm -hmm. of Iraq and Afghanistan wars right. and the Medicare prescription <clears throat> drug benefit or the tax cuts, I think the question is, how are they being paid for? Well, the, what we tried very hard to do, I, first of all, I believe tax cuts are, are an appropriate part of a policy to achieve economic growth. That in fact, there's a, a um, I'm a uh, Jack Kemp, Art Laffer uh, kind of Republican. I believe that, that um, it's important to leave as much as we can with uh, the individual wage owner and, and business so that they can invest and create more jobs, and that in and of itself creates more tax revenue down the road. So I'm not uh, not opposed to that proposition at all. What about paying for the wars, paying for the Medicare prescription drug benefit? Well, uh, the wars were paid for. I mean, the funds were appropriated. Right. All right, I want to move on. Mm -hmm. um, your daughter Liz, obviously, is primarying Senator Mike Enzi in mm -hmm. Wyoming. Yep. Um, not just running for office on her own, but actually a primary challenge. Make the case for her. Why should she be elected uh, and Senator Mike Enzi be defeated in the primary? Well, there are several reasons. First of all, obviously, I'm a big supporter of my daughter's, sure. but uh, I really believe the Republican Party is in trouble. You know, we've lost the last two presidential elections, and uh, we badly need, I think, to bring along a new generation of, of talent, uh, new leaders, recruit new folks into the party. Uh, I think Liz does exactly that. A mom with five kids, a lot of in the University of Chicago, two tours in the State Department. Um, bright, capable, uh, talented, and um, so she's offered herself as a candidate in Wyoming. Mike's not a bad guy. Um, he's had three terms in the U.S. Senate in the hundred year history since we've been electing senators directly uh, in this country. Uh, there's only been one time when the Wyoming senator had more than three terms. It's always sort of been the norm, the limit. Um, Mike told a lot of people he wasn't going to run. Uh, then he decided he was going to run. But we're going to. There's going to be a primary. Nothing wrong with that. I had to run in a primary when I ran the first time around. That's when uh, you had the first heart attack. That's when I had the first heart attack. Three weeks or three months before the election. So, I think it's going to be a good, healthy contest. Um, I think Liz is a great candidate. I think she's done very well. Her first uh, financial report. She outraised Mike. Um, she uh, has done, mounted a very effective campaign. We've got many months to go. The primary is not until August, but uh, I'm delighted she's doing it and um, want to do everything I can to support her. She's out there earning it one vote at a time, which is the way you got to do it in Wyoming, and I think she's going to win. Yeah, big state. One, one big state, state, about one voter per square mile. So one thing that she did that, that uh, I thought was interesting was 
Um, she came out against same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, your other daughter, Mary, married her longtime partner, Heather, mm -hmm. last year. Um, I assume that Liz, you, the whole family was there and supportive. I know you've, you were for many years to the left of President Obama when it came to some of these issues. Is that going to be an awkward Christmas table conversation? <laughs> well, I, uh, my position on, the, on that issue is well known. Uh, I enunciated it in 2000, a debate with Joe Lieberman. Uh, it hasn't changed. And uh, I'll let my daughter speak for themselves. Fair enough. Um, let's go back to your uh, to your book, fascinating book. Um, the uh, you have a heart transplant. You have somebody else's heart in your body right, right now. You don't know whose it is. Do you want to? I think of it as my new heart. Uh, I have enormous regard, and uh, always try to go out of my way to thank the donor, the donor's family. I wouldn't be here today if it, if it hadn't been for for that gift. And um, you're an organ donor. I'm right? an organ donor. I, I am, have been I for some well. time. Uh, I got that little symbol on my uh, driver's license. I'd urge everybody to be a, a donor. You may need one someday, and it's very important that, that we increase the, the donor base out there. But in terms of, of um, uh, knowing a lot about the, uh, the donor, I don't. Uh, they don't tell you ordinarily. There is a process you can go through a third party, and both the donor's family and the recipient uh, can conceivably communicate through that third party if there's a desire to do so on both sides. Uh, at the outset, they don't encourage it, partly because when I came out of that surgery after I'd received the new heart, I'm you know, ecstatic. I mean, my life has been extended for who knows how long. From the standpoint of the donor's family, they've just been through a terrible tragedy. They've lost someone they love, uh, an important member of the family. As I say, when I think about it at this stage, I'm enormously grateful for the donor and, and uh, that decision. But I also, I think of it as my new heart, and, and that's the way I live with it. Has it changed you at all having, s I know it's your new heart, I mean, but it, I, it was- Am I a Democrat now? No, <laughs> no, no. no it, I didn't say it was bleeding. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I mean, uh, is there, have you noticed anything different about yourself? No. No, not at all? No, I tell my wife my hair is growing back, but she doesn't believe it. <laughs> I, I can't really tell. I see. Um, you had, I think it's fair to say, the best health care somebody in your condition could have. And you also lucked out in terms of your doctor uh, told me, and you quote him in the book, like driving a road and there are all these red lights and yes. every time you approach the intersection it turns right. green. All this technology, stents, uh, Lipitor, uh, all these devices uh, created just in the nick of time for mm -hmm. you. Who paid for all this? Well, the same way anybody else would have. Most of it was Blue Cross Blue Shield. I carried Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance when I was a government employee. When I wasn't a government employee, after I left uh, the White House back in 77, I paid the whole tab myself. Um, and then when I, I think uh, that covered me basically up through my time in the White House. And I believe then when I came out of, of my service uh, as vice president, then Medicare kicked in for me. And I carried Blue Cross Blue Shield as a supplement. So is this basically anyone with insurance could have had the same experience in terms of benefiting from technology? Yes. Incredible. Last question for you. Just because we've been talking about death so much mm -hmm. um, and you've escaped it narrowly several mm -hmm. times as you write about in this, in this fascinating book co-written with your doctor. What do you want them to say about you when you're gone? Well, uh, recently had an experience in Wyoming we have a thing out there called the One Shot Antelope Hunt, sponsored by uh, folks in Lander. It's been going on for 70 years in the, the uh, Shoshone tribe, which is right there on the reservation. And uh, I competed this year, and every year they give the shooters that compete an Indian name. And this year the Indian name they gave me was Two Heart. That might be appropriate. Two Heart. Two Heart. Vice President Dick Cheney, thank you so much.